Hi everyone, how you going? Welcome. Hello to all the subscribers, non-subscribers, trolls, bots and lurkers alike. Yes, welcome. Have you heard of the Society of Antiquities of London? Yeah. Society of Antiquities London is a learned society chartered by its Royal Charter of 1751 with the encouragement, advancement and furtherance of a study and knowledge of antiquities and history of this and other countries. It's based at Burlington House, Piccadilly, London, a building owned by the UK government and is a registered charity. Hmm. Members of the society are known as fellows and entitled to use post-nominal letters, FSA after the names. Fellows are elected by existing members of the society and to be elected persons shall be excelling in the knowledge of antiquities and history of this and other nations and to be desirous to promote honor, business and anonymous of society. Yeah. The society retains a highly selective election procedure in comparison with many other learned societies. Nominations for the fellowship can come from only existing fellows of the society and it must be signed by at least five or up to 12 existing fellows. Certifying that, from their personal knowledge, a candidate would make a worthy fellow. Elections then occur by anonymous ballot and the candidate must achieve a ratio of two yes votes for every no vote cast by fellows participating in the ballot to be elected as a fellow. Fellowship is thus regarded as a reconciliation of significant achievement in the fields of archaeology, antiquities, history and heritage. First secretary of the society was William Stuckley. As of 2020, the society has a membership of oh, 3,300 3, fellows. Okay, history and incidentals. incidentals. The persecutor... Organisation, the College of Antiquities, was founded in 1586, fun functioned largely by debating society until it was forbidden to do so by King James I in 1614. The first formal meeting of the Modern Society of Antiquities occurred in the Bear Tavern on the Strand on the 5th of December 1707. This early group, conceived by John Tailman, John Br Bragford and Humphrey Walling Wangley, sought after sort of charter from Queen Anne for the study of British antiquities. Its projected ventures included a series of 35 books to be issued. The proposal for the society was to be advanced by Robert Harley, Harley, first Earl of Oxford, but his dismissal from the government caused it to become idle. The formalisation of proceedings occurred in 1717. A lot happened in that year. The first minutes of the Mitre Tavern, Fleet Street, are dated 17th of January, 1718. Those attending these meetings examined objects, gave talks and discussion theories and historical sites. I'm pretty sure that might be the same tavern where the Rosicrucians and the Freemasons joined um, the 25th of June, 1717. Pretty sure that's the same place. Reports on the dilapidation of the significant buildings was also produced. The society was also concerned with topics of heraldry, genealogy, and historical documents. In 1751, a successful application for the Charter of Incorporation was sought by its long-serving Vice President Joseph Alanoff, which allowed the Society to own property. The Society began to gather large collections of manuscripts, paintings, artefacts, housing, such gifts and bequests, while proper institution for them did not exist. The acquisition of a large group of important paintings in 1828 preceded the establishment of the National Portrait Gallery gallery some 30 years by some 30 years a gift of Thomas Kerridge which included portraits of Edward Mary Tudor and two of the Richards two of Richard III reveal anti-Tudor bias in their late portrayal following the London Blitz the society organized many of the evacuations of Roman and medieval ruins exposed by the bombing of the city with annual surveys performed each year between 1946 and 1942 among other finds, they discovered a previously unknown London citadel in the northeast corner of the London Wall. The findings were summarised in 1968 by W.F. Grimes. In 2007, the Society celebrated its tranquil year, okay, recognising the first less formal meetings with an ex exhibition of the Royal Academy entitled Making History Antiquities in Brisbane 1707-2007. It was marked by two substantial publications, a collection of 17 scholarly essays 
on parallel themes of history of the society itself and changing interpretations of the material relics over the past three centuries of its existence. The illustrated catalogue of exhibition, which included 15 shorter thematic essays by various expert contributions. The society faced controversy in 2019 when its council was unable to pass a resolution to elect fellow Hubert Cheshire. In 2015, the trial of the facts had reached the verdict that Cheshire had committed child sexual abuse offences, leading to a recommendation from the House of Honours Committee that he be stripped of his honours. The council issued a statement saying that it regrets that a majority of those present at the vote did not see fit to support the resolution, and that that incident showed the need to modernise the society's status and government's procedures. In 2020, following David Starkley's comments on slavery and genocide, the society announced that they were modernising their practices for dealing with behaviour which runs contrary to their values. <laughs> Starkey subsequently resigned his fellowship. Do you guys get it? Can you see what it's doing, what this group does? What their purpose is? The Society's Library is a major archaeological research library in the UK, having acquired material since the early 18th century. The library's present holding numbers is more than 100,000 books and around 800 currently received periodic titles. The catalogue includes raw drawings, manuscripts such as the infantry of all Henry's possessions at the time of his death, as the oldest archaeological library in the country, the library holds an outstanding collection of British county histories, a fine collection of the 18th, 19th century books of antiquity to Brisbane, and other centuries are exceptionally wide-ranging collection of periodically tales, British and foreign, which dates back to the early mid 19th century. Vusta Momenta. In 1718, the Society began to publish a series of illustrated papers on ancient buildings, sites, and artifacts. Many of those written were usually written by members of the society under the title. The series con continued to appear on an irregular basis until 1906. The papers were published in a philo format and were notable for the inclusion of finely engraved views and reproduction of artifacts. An engraver was employed by the society from its inception. The earliest were George Virtue, James Basri, and successors labouring to produce the copper plate used in the printing of the Philo editions. The prints were often large and appealing and were intended to satisfy popular demand for archaeological subject matter. The quasi-scientific illustrations were often inserted with multiple viewpoints of architectural details. A fellow of the Society, Richard Goff, director 1771-1791, sought to expand and improve publication of the Society's research, motivated by his steadily dilapidation of examples of the Gothic architecture. A later series of oversized issues was to be used to accommodate the format of some historical works which the history had commissioned to be reproduced by Edward Edwards and Samuel Hieronymus Grime in watercolour in 1771. The first issues of these were mostly done by Bézère. The first of these was a reproduction of the 16th century oil painting with the of the historic scene at the Field of Cloth of Gold. That's interesting. The paper of the series required larger size than available. The manufacturer, James Watman, was instructed to create a sheet 31 inches by 53 inches, 790 millimetres by 1,350 millimetres. The name given to the format is Antiquitan. The engraving of the plate measured 4 foot 1 inch, 1.24 metres by 2 foot 3 inch, 0.69 metres, required two years to complete. The standard printing for this series was 400 prints. The plates were carefully stored by the society and used occasionally to fulfil later requests. Only three of the seven plates still exist. Archaeology. The society's first journal, Archaeology Miscellaneous Tracks Relating to Antiquity, of which was the first volume appeared in quattro format. In 1770, the journal mainly contained papers that had been delivered at the Society's meetings. In the early years, these included many derived, delivered in pieces, decades, that it had remained unpublished. It continued to appear more than less regular basis until after the Second World War, but then became increasingly irregular, some of it, its ground having been taken by the Society's other journals. Only two volumes were published in the 1980s, volume 107 and 108, and two in the 90s, 
volumes 109 and 110 published in 91 and 92 respectively. The Society's tenant I can't say that, sorry. Collection of essays 2007 was technically published as volume 111 of. No volumes have been published since, but the series has never been formally terminated. Proceedings and Antiquities Journals. In 1843, the Society took the decision to publish some of its proceedings in a second periodical and smaller format, initially unillustrated, which could appear a more frequent basis than. It was entitled Proceedings of the Society of Antiquities of Ant London. The first part appeared in 1844, containing papers delivered in 1843, and the first series continued, continued until 1859, by which time four volumes had appeared. A second series, which was then begun, in which 32 volumes appeared down to 1920. In 1921, Proceedings were superseded by a new annual journal, the Antiquities Journal. This continued to the present day, volume 100 having been published in 2020. Salon. Since the end of 2001, the Society has published a fortnightly online newsletter called Salon, Society of Antiquities Online Newsletter. So we got all of the past presidents, and some of these names here, I would not doubt. Um, they are Masons or Rosicrucians, Jacobsons. Um, look how he's holding his finger, yeah. They're all part of the club, and I think it's all done to hide history. I don't think it's to, um, you know, better it. I think it's done to cover up. To get into it makes it hard. Because I don't want you to know what's going on. So, yeah, I thought you might like that one. What have we got here? Some illustrations. The Gate of Wild Whitehall, Hoblin Gate. In volume one, seventeen forty seven, eighteen twenty six. One of the rooms in the West Wing used by the Society of Antiquities. Definitely Masons have to be. Look at these symbols. The Eastern stars as well. Two pillars. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching. Raise your vibrations. Hit that like. Subscribe if you want or not. Much love. Bye now.